when working with logic, we're going to do a lot of comparison logic, where we're going to see if this, then this. And that's referred to as Boolean logic. And when you're drawing it, you have really two primary options. You're either going to have an option where you have something to do if it's true and something to do if it's false. That's a true, that's a false. Or you may only have one side where you only do something if an equation is true. And those are really your two common ways with Boolean logic. When you're evaluating logic, you're evaluating a bunch of different um, relational operators. And in most programming languages, now the book, and I find this a little, little confusing, the book is using equals. So it's going to check and see if A equals A, then something will evaluate as true. Is this a true statement? No. Because in programming, the code behind a lowercase a is inherently different than the code behind an uppercase a because it has to be different to show the proper letter on the screen. The other thing I don't like, what I don't like here is in most programming languages, because equals is the assignment operator, equals equals is the comparison operator. So that's the one that I'm going to use. So there's a bunch of different things you can compare. So if you're checking to see if something is true or false, and that's the Boolean logic, it's either true or false, because those are the two options. So you can check and see if A equals equals A, then you do something, and this would be true. I'm sorry, this would be false. It would be true or false. This would be false, because they're not the same. You might check if A equals equals A, and that would be true. And this must look really, really strange, because why would you check that? Well, you wouldn't. What you'd check is variables. So let's say we have variables, and I'm going to just simplify it. We're going to call it var1, var2, var3, var4. Now, it's not a good idea to use these as variable names, but here, these are just variables. They're not representing anything, so var1 through var4 is a meaningful va name. They're just my four variables. And so I have variable 1 equals 5, variable 2 equals 5, variable 3 equals 7, and variable 4 equals 0. So now, instead, if a equals equals a, we'll check to see if variable 1 equals equals variable 2. And since they're both 5, the actual value of both of those variables is 5, then it evaluates as true. So you aren't typically evaluating constants. You're typically evaluating variables. So you might check to see if something's equal. That's common. You may also check to see if something is, let's write this a little bit bigger. We might do if variable 1 is greater than variable 3. So again, to, to evaluate if this is true or false, variable 1 is 5. Variable 3 is 7. Is 5 greater than 7? No, it's false. So that equation would evaluate false. If we flipped it and said is variable 1 less than variable 3, that would be true. So you'll often use a greater than, a less than. You can also do, and there's a couple ways to do this. So if variable 1, and we'll do variable 4. So we can check greater than, we can check less than, we can check greater than or equal to. So if w variable 1, which is 5, is greater than variable 4, that's true. If they were equal, that would also be true. So if it was variable 1 and variable 2, this would check. Is variable 1, 5, greater than variable 2. No, it's not. But since it's either or or equal to, that would be true. The other thing that you'll check sometimes 
is for not. And there's two ways to do not equals. You can do that symbol for not equals, or in the la some languages, it's the exclamation point, not equals. And then anything here, except for comparing variable one and variable two, would be true. So variable three, this would be true, because seven is not equal to five. But if this was variable two, it would be false, because five equals five. So something I want you to think about, you inherently, Almost everybody who I talk to um, basically understands logic. You get logic at a very early age. I'm going to give you an example. When I had kids who were younger, my kids are grown and gone now, but when my kids were young, um, often they would want a ride someplace. And I would tell them, you really, I'll, I'll take you for a ride, but if you want to go to the mall or to Walmart or whatever, you have to clean your room and take out the garbage. Now, Every child inherently understands this, and versus or. If I tell my son, you have to clean your room, and you have to take out the garbage, and then I will take you to the mall, he knows that if he cleans his room, but doesn't take out the garbage, he's not going to the mall. If he takes out the garbage, but doesn't clean his room, he's not going to the mall. With an and equation, both parts have to be true. For him to go to the mall, he has to take out the garbage and clean his room. Completely different than an OR equation. If you're using an OR equation, either part can be true. So if I tell my son, you have to either clean your room or take out the garbage, and I'll give you a ride to the mall. If he does either part of the equation, that makes it true. Those are the difference between AND and OR, and that's what we're going to get into next. Here's an example of a truth table for an AND statement. We have variable x and variable y. In this case, we're going to say child is under 10, and it's Tuesday. And if both of those conditions are true, the child's meal is free that day. So in the first case, the child is less than 10, and it's a Tuesday, in which case it's true, and the meal is free. If the child is less than 10, but it's Saturday, the meal is not free. If the child is 12 and it's Tuesday, the meal is not free. If the child is 12 and it's Friday, the meal is not free. Only when both statements are true will the combination statement be true. And it's common in more complex scenarios to actually draw out your logic like this to help you understand it. So that's what's called a truth table. And this is a very common example of how it would be used. And this is how you would write your statement. Now, in a programming language, you usually use parentheses if it's child is under 10 and, and Tuesday, which if it was a Boolean, it would just be listed as true. Then you would have a then meal is zero dollars. So typically, you'll do it in parentheses like that. That's what the programming looks like. So that's your and evaluation. Now, if we change this to an or, That's going to change the equation here. If it's an OR, which is usually two lines, if it's true and true, it will still be true. If it's true or false, in an OR statement, that's true, because only one side has to be true. If it's false and true, it's true. If it's false and false, it's false. So the big difference between an OR and an AND in this occasion is three quarters of the options for an OR statement will evaluate to true. Three quarters of an AND statement options will evaluate to false. So that's the difference between OR and AND.